Good morning, dear friends, and welcome to this Mass of Tuesday, the 14 week in ordinary time. This Mass is going to be offered for all of you, and we pray for the intentions that we have received for those who are sick, those who are grieving, those who um, are troubled by the impact of this virus, and those who have lost their jobs, those whose families are stressed, young people who are confused at this time we pray for all of them we also pray for those who have birthdays or anniversaries during this time i invite you to please join your intentions and let us pray together to god our opening hymn will be city of god Son and the Holy Spirit. Amen. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God our Father, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all and with your spirit. Dear friends, today we celebrate the memorial of Saint Catherine the Capita, Virgin. In this Mass we pray that God may grant the intentions we bring to him today, but above all that through the prayers of these Native American saints, that God may bless our country. To prepare ourselves for this Mass, let us call to mind our sins and ask God's mercy and forgiveness. You were sent to heal the contrite. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. You came to call sinners to repentance. Christ, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. You plead for us at the right hand of the Father. Lord, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us. Forgive us our sins and bring us to life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. O God, who desired the Virgin St. Catherine de Capita to flower among Native Americans in the life of innocence, grant through her intercessions that when all are gathered into your church from every nation, tribe, and tongue, they may magnify you in a single canticle of praise. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns forever and ever. Amen. Our first reading is a reading from the prophet Isaiah. In the days of Ahaz, king of Judah, son of Jotham, son of Uzziah, Rezin, king of Aram, and Pekah, king of Israel, son of Ramelia, went up to attack Jerusalem, but they were not able to conquer it. When word came to the house of David, that Aaron was encamped in Ephraim. The heart of the king and the heart of the people trembled as the trees of the forest tremble in the wind. Then the Lord said to Isaiah, Go out to meet Ahaz, you and your son, Sheh Jashub, at the end of the conduit of the upper pool, on the highway of the fuller's field, and say to him, Take care you remain tranquil and do not fear. Let not your courage fail before these two storms of smoldering brand, the blazing anger of Raisin and the Arameans and of the son of Remelia, because of the mischief that Aaron, Ephraim, and the sons of Remelia plot against you, saying, Let us go up and tear Judah asunder. Make it our own by force, and appoint the son of Tabil, king there. Thus says the Lord, this shall not stand, it shall not be. Damascus is the capital of Aram, and Rezin is the head of Damascus. Samaria is the capital of Ephraim, and Ramelius, son, the head of Samaria. 
but within 60 years and five, Ephraim shall be crushed, no longer a nation. Lest your faith is, your faith is firm, you shall not be firm. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Our response to the psalm is, God upholds his city forever. God upholds his city forever. Great is the Lord and holy to be praised in the city of our God. His holy mountain, fairest of heights, is a joy, is a joy of all the earth. God upholds his city forever. Mount Zion, recesses of the north, is a city of the great king. God is with his cast, her castles. Renowned is he as a stronghold. God upholds his city forever. Hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. If today you hear his voice, harden not your heart. Hallelujah, hallelujah. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, Lord. Jesus began to reproach the towns where most of his mighty deeds had been done, since they had not repented. Woe to you, Chorazin, woe to you, Bethsaida. For if the mighty deeds done in you had been done in Tyre and Sidon, they would have long repented and sat in sackcloth and ashes. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for Tyre and Sidon on the day of judgment than for you. And as for you, Capernaum, will you be exalted to heaven? You will go down to the netherworld. For if the mighty deeds done in your midst have been done in Sodom, it will, be, it will have remained until this day. But I tell you, it will be more tolerable for the land of Sodom on the day of judgment than for you. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, Lord Jesus Christ. My dear friends, I am blessed today to be able to celebrate this sacrifice with you and I hope that from this altar your lives also will be a blessing and be blessed. Very quickly I'd like to reflect with you from the gospel reading. In this gospel I think the central point that Jesus makes here is that if you haven't greatly blessed you are greatly responsible. If you haven't greatly blessed, you are also um, given greater responsibility. And I, as I think about our country here, I think our country is the most blessed nation on earth, face of this earth. Because there is no other nation like this where you have, it's almost like a melting pot of everybody, everybody. In this one place but more than just that you, you think about the super outstanding things that have happened in this country you're just blown away but this is a time where I think our leadership is required more than ever because if all the things done here were done somewhere else maybe they would fear God and respect God better that we are doing at this time. Maybe they would listen to God more and listen to God better than we are doing at this time. I, fear, I hope and I fear and I pray that the sentence Jesus was passing here on, on Chorazin and Bethsaida will not be our sentence because we have failed to listen to God. We have failed to listen to what God is saying at this time. I have said this over and over again that God at this time is giving us three very important lessons and we seem to be failing on all of them. The first and standing strong for long until we learn to depend on him. The second we will not thrive and thrive for long until we learn to recognize our common dependence on each other and take care of each other. And finally, we will not have a world 
that we have right now and have it for long until we learn to take care of the rest of creation. These three levels, God constantly calls us because he has blessed us super fabulously. Then, along those blessings, God is also calling us to be super responsible. There are too many. Now, when I came into this country, one thing that stood out to me and that I loved about America was our desire to care for, the, for each other. You saw it almost everywhere. Once there was a problem, people from everywhere, people who don't even know anybody, will just step up and see how best we can solve it together. Whatever happened to that America is something we need to be worried about. It's something we need to fear. Because there are too many selfish people today. Each day, I, I look at and I, I hear, I, I don't know what, how we are raising our children. I understand the whole idea of freedom. But I also worry that our freedom has become so irresponsible and so selfish. You hear young people who are strong, who feel they are strong and vibrant and healthy. They tell you, well, I don't care about this virus. I know I would never be sick, and if I'm sick, I know I'll, I'll be okay. God bless you. But I hope you will spend one moment and think about somebody, a child, that you know, because I'm sure you do know, who began to fight from the very first day of her conception, or his conception in his mother's womb, because he was going to be born with some physical or mental disability. That child has fought to this point, and that child needs you to fight on their side, not against them. And when you wear a mask and maintain all the social distancing and the required hygienic conditions that we need, you fight on the side of that child. You fight on the side of that person who needs you right now more than ever. And that's what America is best. We best when we come together, when we recognize that our survival depends on each other. And, and so today, God is reminding us, if you have been given such good health, use it well. You may not have it for too long. Whatever is it, it is that God has given to us, he's reminding us, we must learn to use it well. Otherwise, we may not have it for very long. I hope this sentence is not ours, that we would recognize this moment and make the most of it. So always I'd like to end my reflections by reminding you that we are still the delight of Almighty God. God loves you very much. Let us pray. Most merciful God, on this day as we remember the life and sacrifice of St. Ketawi Tekapita, we beg Almighty God for a life of greater sacrifice. Help us to recognize, dear God, all the blessings that you have given us. And please give us grace to use them well, to improve society, and indeed to be a blessing to others. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who are sick. Pray especially for those in critical care. Ask Almighty God that you may send the power of your blessings and your healing graces to give them strength and recovery. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for those who have died and pray for those who are grieving that you may give rest to our dead, O oh God, and bring comfort and strength and healing to those whose lives are changed and broken. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We pray for our men in the military, men and women in the military, Pray for doctors and nurses. Pray for those in the front line of this battle against this virus. Pray and ask that God may continue to inspire their sacrifice. That God may bless those sacrifices with great results. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have birthdays or other anniversaries today, that God may bless them and grant them many more healthy, joyful, and productive years ahead. We pray to the Lord. Lord, hear our prayer. We ask our blessed mother to pray for us as we say. Hail Mary, full of grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed are thou amongst women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, mother of God, pray for us sinners now and the hour of our death.
Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this bread to offer which earth has given and human hands have made, which will become our bread of life. Blessed be God forever. Blessed are you, Lord God of all creation, for through your goodness we have this wine to offer. Fruits of your vine and work of human hands become our spiritual drink. Blessed be God forever. Pray, my beloved sisters and brothers, pray that my sacrifice and yours be acceptable to God, our mighty Father. May the Lord accept the sacrifice of your hands for the praise and glory of his name, for our good and the good of his holy church. Amen. Let us pray. <laughs> May we receive, O oh Lord, we pray, the effects of this sacrifice dedicated to you, so that we may be cleansed from our every our old earthly ways, and through the example of blessed Catherine Capita, be renewed by growth in heavenly life through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Lift up your hearts. We lead them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right and just. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks. Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, for in the saints who consecrated themselves to Christ for the sake of the kingdom of heaven, it is right to celebrate the wonders of your providence, by which you call human nature back to its original wholeness and bring it to experience on this earth the gifts we promise in the new world to come. And so with all the angels and saints, we praise you as without end we are clean. Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of hosts, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. You are indeed holy, O Lord, the fount of all holiness. Make holy therefore this gift, we pray, by sending down your spirit upon them like a dew fall, that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered willingly into his passion, the Lord Jesus took bread, and giving thanks, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, the Lord took the chalice, once more giving thanks. He gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and drink from it. For this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. With the first acclamation, let us proclaim the mystery of our faith. We proclaim your death, O Lord, and profess your resurrection until you come again. Therefore, as we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life and this chalice of salvation, giving thanks that you have felt us worthy to be in your presence and minister to you. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. Remember, Lord, your church spread throughout the world and bring her to the fullness of charity, together with Francis our Pope and Timothy our Bishop and all the clergy. Remember also our brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of the resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all we pray that with the blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with blessed Joseph, her spouse, with the blessed apostles and all the saints who have placed you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him and with him and in him, O God Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Let us rise and pray with confidence in the words our Lord gave us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us, and lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, we pray, from every evil. Graciously grant peace in our days, 
that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress, as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours now and forever. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles, Peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, but on the faith of your church, and graciously grant our peace I may be in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. The peace of the Lord Jesus be with you always and with your spirit. Let us offer each other the sign of God's peace. From me to all of you, dear friends, may God's peace rest and abide now and always. Amen. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Look up, my sisters and brothers, and behold the Lamb of God. Behold him who takes away the sins of the world. Blessed are those called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word, and my soul shall be free. During this moment where many of us are unable to receive the Eucharist physically, let us pray for the grace of spiritual communion. Most merciful God, we thank you for the gift of this sacrament and the nourishment and the grace it produces in us. For many of your sons and daughters who are still unable to attend Mass and receive you physically, we ask, O oh God, for the grace of spiritual communion, that whatever their needs, spiritual needs, emotional or physical needs are, that their desire to receive you may be enough to bring them your blessing. We ask all of this. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Let us pray. May the holy reception of the body and blood of your only begotten Son, O Lord, turn us away from the cares of this living world, so that following the example of blessed Katharita Capita, we may grow in sincere love for you on earth and rejoice to behold you for all eternity in heaven. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. Prayer to St. Michael the Archangel. St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in battle. Be our protection against the wickedness and sins of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. And do thou, O Prince of the Heavenly Host, by the power of God, cast into hell Satan and all the evil spirits that prowl throughout the world, seeking the ruins of souls. Amen. Before the final blessing, I'd like to wish all those who are celebrating birthdays, those who are grieving at this time, and whatever your needs are, I hope and pray that through our Blessed Mother's intercession, you may find comfort and find grace to meet your needs. As always, remember, you remain the delight of God. God loves you very much. The Lord be with you and with your spirit. Through the prayers of our Blessed Mother, and Almighty God bless and keep you, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Dear friends, this Mass is ended. We go forth in peace to love and serve the Lord. Thanks be to God. We will sing a hymn to our, our blessed mother, Immaculate Mary, thy praises will sing. Mm -hmm.
Immaculate Mary, thy praises we sing. Who renowned in splendor with Jesus our King. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria. In heaven the blessed thy glory proclaim, on earth with thy children in hope thy sweet name. Ave, Ave, Ave Maria, Ave, Ave Maria.